Hello my friends, Boomy here once again with another video for you, my SOTOR brothers and sisters. How's everyone doing today? In the galaxy far, far, far away. Oh, hey, if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button for all your SOTOR fun news, gadgets, and updates right here, right now. My friends, I hope everyone is doing well. Indeed, indeed I do. Uh, if you're, like I said, if it's your first time here, hit the like button, hit the share button, hit that subscribe button. I'm not going to say smash, because that annoys me from other uh, fellow YouTubers. None of which actually do so to her. I'm just saying, in general. My friends, we have uh, some updates with the Galactic Seasons and what the Bioware is going to do going forward in the Galactic Seasons. And when this Galactic Season, the Season 1, will end. They have a blog post by David Status, so let's get into it. Let's see what David had to say. David Stats says, hello. We wanted to take this opportunity to discuss some of the feedback we have received regarding Galactic Seasons and provide some answers and clarification. Insight into our goals and how we address some of the issues which have propped up early this season. This is going to be a large de delve, so let's dive right in. When will season one end? Well, they're looking. Our, they're saying our current plan has always been for season one to last about five months. Which, when it comes to a battle pass, when it comes to seasonal passes, this is the long one. They they definitely again. I don't want to keep pooping on <laughs> Bioware for this, but they definitely they they quotes in the air did their homework, but didn't pay attention. To the homework, so yeah, I'm not, I have not been a part of a battle pass that has lasted this long, almost half a year. Usually, you're going to get about four battle passes in about a year. Uh, so this one's this this is long, but they continue. Given that season one start date was April 27th, that would put the end date for season one in the September time frame. However, we acknowledge we never stated the official end date. Season 1 will end on Tuesday, September 28th at 12 p.m. This information will be available on the Galactic Season screen in an upcoming update. And that's another thing. If they actually did their proper homework, and I'm not here to keep pooping on Bioware, but it seems like they just half-ass things right now. If they had done their proper homework, and it's really easy to do, especially if you're connected with EA, look at Apex Legends. Uh, look at other uh, gaming companies that are doing seasonal passes, doing battle passes, what have you. More often than not, everyone has an end time. You have a counter to how many days you have until that pass is done. And they start up with the new one because that's when you know you're going to get new content. You're going to get a complete refresh, a brand new seasonal pass. But again, Bioware just didn't do their complete diligence in this. And I'm going to say, it. listen, you all know me. I love Bioware, I love SOTOR, but the moment, when I, from experience, when I see them just half-heartedly doing something, I'm going to call them out on it. I will never be a Bioware apologist. Just saying, I never will be. They say for Galactic Seasonal Tokens, we have seen a lot of questions regarding Galactic Seasons Tokens and if they will or will not expire at the end of the seasons. We do not intend to reset these tokens at the end of any season. Galactic Season Tokens are meant to be collected and shared from season to season. They are a permanent currency for any and all Galactic Seasons now and in the foreseeable future. And I think that's a great thing. I, lo I love the fact that they roll over. You can save them uh, there. Now, if they, I would love to see what they do for Season 2. Um, what what are they going to do to top? I think the the winner of this season are the um, penthouses on the fleets. That's the who cares about the companion? That's a waste of time. But I think the the winner of this is are the new stronghold uh, apartments on the fleets. And I would really like to see what they're going to do to top that for season two, because I really think season one's eh, it's whatever, but season two is really going to where going to be the place that we see Bioware come in, really take our suggestions and feedback to heart, and implement that for season two. Now, when it comes to priority objectives, they say we have seen a lot of feedback in regards to the priority objectives, both in types and variety of activities they include. The reroll feature and the potential of sharing them with your friends to make it easier to tackle them together. More variety and refreshes. While Galactic Seasons will never have the same level or variety as the Conquest system, for which I would ask the question, well, why not? 
It is our intention they continue to add more variety into later seasons, which we believe should address both the desire for more variety as well as more refreshes. The problem with this is you have you got we have to wait what three more months till that, which really isn't that long of a time, but still. You can really put that on the table of this is something they should have thought about beforehand. It, it's just, yeah. This is one of the things that bothers me about Bioware. These are things they would not run into if they've actually fully thought out the process of what they're working on. If they really went in and troubleshooted everything, really listened to people's feedback on the PTS, then it would not have been a big issue. This would have all been implemented in season one and it would have gone off without a hitch, but we're running to a lot of hitches and hopefully by my beard, by Odin's beard, let's hope and pray by season two, they really hit the mark on that one. They said, when we've looked at season one, we considered a few key, key elements, activity patterns we saw in player week to week conquest participation again, they have a fetish for conquest. Where there was an opportunity to increase engagement, ensuring that daily and weekly priority objectives fell into a certain time to complete range, and ensuring that no matter which objective you had, it was relevant to what you are able to actually participate in. By keeping this initial list of priority objectives a little more trimmed down and focused, we could ensure that the players met all these key elements. As we move into future seasons, we'll be building further upon this foundation. The biggest problem with this is, and the biggest issue I have seen from the community, and I have, is almost forcing people into doing activities they do not want to do. And like I said in the very beginning, during the PTS trial, during all that stuff in other videos, if Bioware had just hooked this into Conquest system, hooked it into every part of this game, we would not have these issues. It's like, I don't want to keep beating this dead horse, but honestly, Bioware, you are your own problem in this. We wouldn't have these issues if you didn't half-ass things and actually, you know, full-heartedly went into something, into a mechanic, went into a new system into the game, and just, you dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's. But this one just seems like you glance at a couple seasonal packs, glass and glance at a couple battle passes, and went, oh, I got an idea. But you don't, you kind of show us that you haven't really actually experienced this stuff firsthand, and you're just winging it. And honestly, my honest opinion, you can hate this if you want. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts. But honestly, you done failed <laughs> on this one. And I don't like beating Bioware up on this one, but I will. Until they get their act together, you're going to be your own downfall. Not us. You guys are. Just saying so, Tor. Y'all need to get your act together. It, it's just a thing. I love this game. I have a passion for this game. But damn. <laughs> Linking and sharing priority objectives similar to refreshes. We are looking into how we can solve the core desire in this request. Priority objectives are built using the same tech we use for achievements and conquest objectives. Unlike missions, this tech does not inherently contain capabilities for sharing, so there would be a lot to consider in supporting this type of feature. While we will continue to explore what this could look like, we know that it is important for players to be able to participate in Galactic Season Priority Objectives with friends, and that is an aspect we are and will be more deeply exploring solutions for while building our future seasons. Our Galactic Seasons vendor, Jalat Nal, is intended to be a rotating vendor similar to Kai Zykin, however, with a longer rotating cadence. We have seen the feedback that players have saved up for a very specific item on her inventory, which then became unavailable without notice. To help make this more predictable schedule, we will be simplifying and unifying the rotating cadences with update 6.3.1, such that all rotations will occur once every week at 12 p.m. GMT. This will line up more appropriately with Kai's current rotation cadence and we hope will help make her inventory more predictable. Group A will remain active for one week and then cycle out for three weeks. Group A will consist of the following rewards. HK55 Jetpack, Lucky 77 Swoop, Markin Creeper Speeding, Model Gravestone, Nico Okara, Nico Okara's Duster, Nico Okara's Blaster, Propaganda Fight for the Meatbags Replica, 
Tantum Ram title, the illustrious. So a lot of this stuff is just recycled stuff that you would have gotten if you were a subscriber and gotten some of the subscriber rewards. So I'm not going to get on my soapbox there. Group B will begin a week after Group A. Eternal Empire Patroller, Galactic uh, Alliance Statue Replica, Ganifari, HK HK 55's Blaster Pistol, Kakarin Dragstar, Model Zakul Battle Cruiser, Rapid Recon Walker, Shea Vizla, Title Test Pilot, and Title The Intrepid. And obviously, Group C will begin after Group uh, uh, B. You will get the Grand Statue of Revan Replica, the HK-55 Helmet, Sniper Rifle, JA-3 Subversive Battle Droid, the Mini Mogul NM-1, Model Mach 2, Paxton Rawl, Tile Scourge of the Huts, Umbaran Patrol, Tantrum, and D, obviously, after C, unless you suck at your alphabet, Chiss Talon Interceptor, Dazivranos, uh, Helotropic Su- Subteroth, HK-55 Bri- Fiber Sword, JA-3 Speeder, Astromech Droid, Makeb Gazebo Replica, RE-1 Scout Droid, and Title of the Risen. Can I just say something? Like, I honestly went into this video not wanting... I had no idea this video would be a complete cluster F of me going like just bazonkers on bioware but a lot of this stuff is just recycled material from subscriber rewards and things you would get like that now yes this is awesome that this stuff is here for people who weren't aren't subscribers who are able to come in and purchase this stuff but i would just say bioware you need to be a little more imaginative when it comes to uh rewards that you can buy and purchase with tokens and such like that i mean a lot of this stuff it's just like reskinning the same astromech we have fifteen thousand astromechs we don't need any more astromechs stop it be a bit more inventive be more creative this is not it i'm really hoping season two is going to be so much better other than season one Stat of priority object or state of priority objectives. We understand and acknowledge that there was initial issues with priority objectives and would like to give some insight into why these issues occurred and what we have done to address them. Players had reported that certain priority objectives stopped tracking either under certain conditions, such as the daily PO, defeat capital enemies, or had been tracking and then suddenly stopped. This was complicated because it was not tied into any one specific process. Instances where players had priority objectives, which were tracking and then suddenly stopped tracking, was a result of an error in the schedule between Galactic Season's weekly schedule and the Conquest schedule. Maybe they shouldn't have tied it into the Conquest system? Just saying. In this instance, the Galactic Season schedule switched over to the next week, indicating that new priority objectives were available prior to the Conquest schedule switching over. Because priority objectives are built using the same tech as our Conquest objectives, if a player happened to log in during this window of time, there was a potential potential to obtain new priority objectives as the system intended. However, when the conquest schedule flipped over 12 hours later, the newly acquired priority objectives of those players had been had become invalid, thus preventing them from further tracking and advancing something they should have thought of beforehand. We have finally brought these two schedules back in line, which we should have done in the first place with each other as we intended and have made additional development and in internal testing improvements to prevent this in the future. Further, we are exploring additional ways to further separate the two systems from each other to help prevent this in future seasons. In instances where players had priority objectives which were tracking and then seemed not to track or update under other conditions was due to complexities of our priority objectives multiple, multiple conditional passes. In these cases, a conditional check was preventing characters above certain levels from progressing pri- progressing through priority objectives, which were already provided as the players assigned priority objectives. Take a shot every time they say priority objectives. We're just going to say PO at this point. We have resolved this condition check and have made notes for future internal development and testing to ensure that this does not occur moving forward. Refreshing into objectives, which were already completed, was due to one of the PO's final conditions checking uh, failing, allowing progress on objectives which were not visible or assigned to the player. This is the same tech which allows hidden achievements to progress and then display themselves when completed. So we needed to ensure that our fix for this was uh, methodical to prevent a more widespread issue. We have identified the fix and rolled it out to a prior to the POs and will continue to cross-check this while developing and in 
externally testing all priority objectives. In addition, we are looking into ways to further prevent this as we move to Season 2. This was uh, only having one priority objective? Well, this was due to timing issue with the st st safeguard we placed in to prevent players from being assigned previously completed priorities objectives. In this instance, the system was assigning priority objectives to the player. However, the conquest system was then resetting these POs, leaving players in a bad state and potentially with only one weekly PO if they had already done that weekly during the prior week. Again, you should never have tied this into the conquest system. Just saying. A lot of their headaches are caused by them. None of this would have happened if they just made this their own system, did their due diligence, and made a new system in this game and not try to tie it to a conquest system and just had it like, or maybe tied into everything. Everything you do in SOTOR, it helps gain, gain you points to get you through the seasonal track. But again, why listen to us? We're only the ones who play the game. My bad. Uh, they continue, uh, we corrected this behavior and in addition created a form of self-repair in the event this occurs. Again, this check if a legacy has correct number of priority objectives, and if not, the system will recognize this and assign the legacy another valid PO. We are examining all the issues we have had with the priority objectives with Season 1 and applying that knowledge moving forward. We are seeing where there are additional opportunities to separate out some of the systems and, always to simp and ways to simplify. I want to thank you for your continued feedback. We are very actively gathering and using it to refine what Season 2 may look like and feel. So there you have it, my friends. There we go when it comes to uh, uh, fixes for the seasonal pass and future fixes that might come in Season 2. Now, I know I berated and bereft and decried uh, Bioware in this video, but honestly, let's we got to be honest with ourselves. Put down our Bioware fanboy and girl hats. Put them down. Set them aside. Let's think logically on this one. If Bioware had listened in the PTS to what the majority of people were saying, to what the majority of experiences were, if Bioware had actually gone out and tried out actual battle passes in different game, went over with tooth, you know, with with a, with a magnifying glass and look to see what these battle passes were like, see if they had a counter to when these season passes were, would end, which would take about three seconds. Uh, these problems that we're talking about that Bioware is taking time away from other content to address would not be an issue and Bioware would be freed up to work towards future co meaningful content for the game. I love Bioware. I love the devs. I've met a lot of them personally. They are great people. But man, it, 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 it is getting harder and harder to not see a lot of areas where they half-ass things and they go in and they just do the bare minimum and then they're scrambling to fix that bare minimum to make it to what something should have been in the very beginning. One could argue 6.0 was exactly that. You know, 6.1 was a complete total laugh. That was, what was that? That was five minutes of taking a tour with your Sith dude. What was, that was why? Why did that, why did 6.1 exist? Everything should have been pegged down a thing. I mean, the, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I honestly do not. Uh, their communication skills suck, but <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, and I have a foot in the door, and I just I, I can't even go into it. But my friends, what we can do is continue to offer feedback. We can continue to go in until they actually fix the things to what it should have been in the first place. And it's hard not to see the similarities to Anthem and to uh, Mass Effect Andromeda and other things Bioware has recently in the past couple years been pushing out to where they've all just been lackluster and they've all been not what they should have been and not have met the full potential that those things could have been and could be today and be very successful today. But again, what's going on, it's not all EA. Now, I know there's a lot of EA haters out there. I get it. EA does need to take some responsibility in this, but it's also the leadership at BioWare. 
they need to either get changed out and people in who are actually will do better for the company and for the games, or they need to just stiff upper lip, go in and do the actual hard work that is meant for these games and to potential and really put forth the potential that these games have and really invest the time and money into these games. Just saying that's my two cents. I was honestly just going to talk about the the new seasonal stuff, but then I read it again uh, after my uh, pre my pre uh, video stuff. And then it just really sunk in. I'm just like, well, damn, <laughs> we're going to talk about this here. Anyways, my friends, put your comments in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on all these. Do you agree with me? If you do, party on. If you don't, also party on. Let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you hit the like button. The more likes we get, the more the algorithm likes us, and more to the front of the pack we go. And make sure you hit the subscribe button. Become part of the family here at Boomy Nation, the freak show of YouTube, the black sheep of gaming. And as always, my friends, we're going to be kind. It's about community. Don't forget to spay and neuter your Wookiees. And we'll see you later, my friends. Good day.